Vinny, can you hold this? Don't let it touch, don't let it, touch it. Is it heavy? Claire, no perfect. <laughs> Never felt so important. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I'm showing you a recipe for classic lemon bars. It's so bright and lemony and delicious. Perfect for winter time to sort of brighten your day, but also a recipe great any time of the year. I make a curd, which is a little bit of an upgrade to the usual lemon bar recipe. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna show you how to make it. The classic lemon bar recipe, there's a shortbread crust and a lemon filling. Now typically the lemon filling is like a simple stir together, eggs, lemon juice, a lot of sugar and a little bit of flour. But really that recipe to me like reads a little bit sweet and I want some of the sugar to be taken out. I wanna maintain this like very, very bright lemon flavor. I like my lemon desserts to be like almost puckeringly tart. And then of course they're covered with powdered sugar so that helps to bring things sort of back in balance with you know a really sour lemon filling. So I like to use a curd as the filling. Lemon curd, one of my favorite things to make, and it helps to bring a kind of body to the filling that doesn't just make it like so incredibly sweet, plus you get the set from egg yolks, and it's like rich, but not too rich, lemony, but not too lemony, and sweet, but not too sweet. Ingredients, very, very straightforward. I have lemons, I'm gonna use juice and zest. A dozen eggs, the recipe uses quite a lot of eggs to set the filling. Kosher salt, unsalted butter, which goes both in the shortbread base and the curd. Granulated sugar, powdered sugar, and all-purpose flour. For special equipment, I have a square baking dish. This is a porcelain baking dish by Made In, our sponsor. I have like a rasp style grater for lemon zest, and then just a large saucepan for making the curd. I'm gonna use this citrus juicer because I need a cup and a half of lemon juice, but that's not required at all. Just makes it faster. Before I get into the recipe, I wanna thank our friends at Made In. We've been partnering with them for a long time. We've cooked in their carbon steel, in their stainless steel cookware. But today we're really highlighting their porcelain bakeware. I'm gonna be making the lemon bars in this square baking dish. I love baking in porcelain because it's naturally non-stick, non-porous. Made In's is made in France from a centuries old proprietary recipe. I love that it's thermal shock resistant so you can go from the fridge or freezer straight to the oven. It's oven safe up to 650 degrees plus so easy to clean and it looks beautiful on your table. This version has a hand painted blue stripe. It's so pretty and perfect for holiday baking. So this season I plan on making bar cookies, brownies, fudge, but also savory dishes like gratins, mac and cheese, that kind of thing, lasagna. Check the description below. There's an offer code for 10% off your total order. So go to madeincookware.com, check out the baking dish and their whole range of bakeware and cookware. Okay, back to the recipe. So the first step for lemon bars is to make the crust or the base. Typically this is like a classic shortbread, so that's what I'm gonna make, I'm not really like reinventing the wheel here. I have a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour, five tablespoons of powdered sugar, a little bit of kosher salt, and 10 tablespoons of cold unsalted butter. So I'm going to start to put this together. Although before I make the shortbread, I do wanna just quickly line the pan. That's just to help me lift out the bars when they're baked. And parchment is preferable to aluminum for lemon bars because um, the aluminum can react with the lemon curd because it's so acidic, it reacts very easily. So I'm gonna cut a little bit of parchment just so that it's the same width as the bottom of my baking dish. I'm just brushing a little bit of melted butter to prevent sticking and then it gives something for the parchment paper to stick to. And I'm just lining the bottom in two longer sides. I don't need to line the other sides. So now I have this nice surface for the bars, okay? So that's prepping your pan. No need to grease the parchment paper. And now I'm gonna make my shortbread base. So I have my flour. I already know this bowl is too small, but I'm going with it. I'm gonna do about a half teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm gonna hold onto the salt because I'll throw a pinch into the lemon filling. The powdered sugar. And now I have 10 tablespoons of butter and I wanna cut this into pieces. It's cold, which is important. You'll get the most tender shortbread starting with cold butter. I'm gonna cut this into cubes. So I'm gonna throw that into my dry mix. I don't need any mixer for this. I'm not gonna use a food processor. This whole thing can be done by hand, which is really nice. And now I wanna toss all of this together. 
Again, this bowl is way too small. But I'm gonna use my fingertips to smash the butter into the flour mixture. It's kind of like if you're making pie dough, if you've done that by hand before. And the idea is just to get this well blended. You can see it kind of is forming a little bit of like a shaggy dough. So I'm gonna continue to work and smash in any butter pieces. I do want it to be uh, uniform in texture. So I was referring to pie dough before, but you wanna go much further than you would for pie dough. With pie dough, you would leave the pieces of butter like, you know, about the size of a pea. And here I wanna go until they basically totally disappear into the flour mixture. So we're not adding any liquid. With shortbread, it's basically butter, sugar, flour. Those are really the only ingredients. So this is getting that kind of classic shortbread look. Crumbly, but not dry. So once it comes together, which it almost has, I'm gonna take it out of the bowl and I'm gonna do a little quick step called fraisage. Fraisage, what it's called? I think it's spelled like F-R-A-I-S-A-G-E or something. Okay, so here's what you do. I'm gonna bring together the dough, kind of in a mound, make sure it all holds together. Then I'm gonna use my bowl scraper. You could use a bench scraper. You could kind of use anything with like a straight edge. And I'm going to, in a sense, smear the dough little by little across the board. Normally I would do it toward myself, but I'll do it toward you so you can see. And this is helping to further blend the butter into the flour mixture. So you see that streak of butter right there? That's an example of how this technique is really creating a more uniform texture. So it's really kind of working that butter in. So then as I'm completing that motion, I'm just scraping it into the pan, seamlessly into the dough. All of that goes to the bottom of the baking dish. The next step is to pat everything evenly into the bottom of the pan. All I have to do is use my fingertips. If the mixture starts to get a little bit sticky, it's because your butter is warm. So I would just pop the whole thing into the fridge and let it chill for five to 10 minutes but this is nice and workable. I don't have any like big streaks of butter because what would happen is in the oven, the butter would melt and it would create some texture that I don't want in the shortbread. Is this even? I think so. I want to get it into the fridge. I mean, it's still on the cool side, but I really want that butter to firm up before I bake it. That is going to sort of prevent the butter from like leaking out as it bakes, just like five minutes in the freezer and then into the oven. My oven is on 350. I'm gonna grab the baking dish and before I throw it in, just poke a couple holes and that will help some steam escape so I don't get any areas that puff up. So this has firmed up nicely. Just going to prick maybe in like eight to 10 spots. So now this is cold and I'm gonna put it into the oven, which is on 350. And what's great about made in porcelain bakeware is it is thermal shock resistant. So no concerns about breakage from cold to hot. So this will go for about 25 to 30 and I just want it to be nice and golden brown across the surface. While that is baking, I can put together the ingredients for my curd, which is the lemon filling. I have a dozen eggs here, which is a lot, um, but I'm gonna use three whole and nine yolks because the reason I use so many eggs and more than I would use for just like a regular curd that you know was for like spreading on scones or having as a filling. Um, I want all those eggs because the eggs are gonna give it a firm set. And I do want a firm set for lemon bars because I wanna be able to like cleanly cut really nice squares. Again, nine yolks and three whole eggs. Sometimes when I, z I do this, I zone out and then I mix up the yolks and the whites. That's really annoying. Oh, Felix. Egg whites will get saved. Who knows what will happen with these? Maybe some angel food cake or meringues, but Put that aside. And now the last step is to grate some lemon zest and then juice them. Now, I don't have enough lemons, so we're really hoping that Harris gets back soon because I need a full cup and a half of lemon juice and I want two tablespoons of finely grated zest. And typically, I think for two tablespoons of lemon zest, I probably will need maybe three of these lemons, which are kind of like small, small, medium lemons. Oh, I love that I have a two tablespoon measure. It seems like just the right amount. So I am going to just set this aside. And now I can go ahead and juice my lemons. Basically, this is a double recipe of the curd in dessert person with some, a couple eggs added for that extra set. So when I was getting my ingredients together, kind of forgot to double it. So let's see how juicy these lemons are because I would need a cup and a half. When I was a kid, my mom, every Sunday would make fresh orange juice with like a very similar juicer. So this is actually very nostalgic for me. We're actually, oh my God. <laughs> what if we have enough and I sent him out? Because we're already almost out of cup. I'm going to strain it because I do want like that really perfectly smooth filling. 
we're at a cup and a quarter, and I have one small lemon left. Will she make it? I want to press out all the pulp, see what I can get. We need conflict, Claire. <laughs> need you to fall short. No, I need it to be, no, no we don't. We don't, no one needs that. All right, I think we're good. I feel like this is enough. Ooh, too short. No, it's not. One sixteenth of a cup too short. You guys, it hasn't drained yet. Yeah, that's not. According to my calculation here, you're on it. Really? Oh my God, it's perfect. Look at that. Okay, call Harris and tell him you don't need him. Kismet. Let's see what he says. No, because I want him to bring home lemons still. I'm gonna rotate it. It's not quite done yet. It could use a few more minutes. That looks so good though. As that is finishing, I am going to start to assemble the curd. I'm gonna take my granulated sugar, cup and a half of juice, cup and a half of sugar. I'm going to put it into my saucepan. Then I'm adding my lemon zest. I want to massage the zest and the sugar together. I do this step often when working with citrus zest, but it's especially important here because I'm going to strain the zest out. So this step helps to encourage the zest to like release all of its oil so it really infuses the curd with its flavor and then I go ahead and remove it. Now I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and my eggs. Remember I have nine yolks and three whole eggs. So the next step is to very thoroughly whisk together the whole eggs, the yolks, and the sugar until the mixture gets several shades paler. So it starts off this like very kind of deep orange. It's gonna get very pale and it's gonna also kind of get a lighter texture. So this step is called blanching. And it comes from the French word blanchir, which means like to whiten or to, or to lighten. So it's just going to get lighter. Lemon curd is a kind of custard, but instead of dairy, it's a citrus juice, like lemon juice or lime juice. I'm just doing it directly in the saucepan rather than in a bowl because it kind of streamlines the process. Now it's time to stream in my lemon juice. Like I wanna give the yolk and sugar mixture a chance to kind of thin out slowly, and that is to prevent any thicker parts from getting like trapped around the sides of the pan. I wanna make sure that it's totally incorporated. Okay. So now I'm ready to move over to the stove top. The timing is great because I think that my crust is ready to come out. The butter gets added after I cook the curd, so I'm gonna leave that right here. Now we're going to cook the curd, pour it over the crust, bake it again. So here's what I'm looking for. It's light golden brown across the surface and hot. And now I'm gonna cook the curd, starting over medium, whisking constantly. And what I'm looking for is, basically the mixture is going to start to heat up and eventually those eggs will start to cook and thicken the curd. My crust baked at 350. I'm gonna lower the temperature to 325 and that is because I want the filling to bake at like a gentler, lower temperature that those eggs set really evenly. So I'm gonna decrease the temp while I'm also stirring constantly, keeping an eye on this. When you're cooking curd, it's really great to work in a saucepan with like thick sides and a heavy bottom because that is gonna promote equal and even cooking. So what can happen if you're working in a flimsy pan is sometimes you'll get like some scorching and overcooking around the sides and then you end up with like a lumpy curd, so that's what you don't want. If you don't have like a nice heavy duty pan, I would recommend doing this in a double boiler. So you basically have your saucepan, but instead of cooking the curd in it directly, you would have it sitting over the saucepan, with a little water in the bottom, you know, in a bowl. It takes a little bit longer, but you will get like a very nicely even, a nice evenly cooked curd. So I'm gonna keep whisking. At this stage, I mean really at any stage, you wanna continuously stir. You can stir with a wooden spoon or a spatula, but for this quantity of curd, I like using a whisk. And make sure that you're getting around the sides and across the bottom, just to avoid any overcooked bits of curd. What happens is like the egg will coagulate and you'll get these little bits in it, but we're gonna strain it anyway. I think this is done. So I pulled the saucepan off the heat because I don't want it to continue cooking. I'm gonna show you sort of what the texture is like. So coating the back of a spoon, it will form an opaque layer of curd on the spoon. And when you run your finger through it, you'll have these sharp lines. 
clean spoon, opaque curd. That's how you know you're done. So the last step before I strain it onto the crust is to whisk in my butter one piece at a time. The butter will look like it's loosening a texture of the curd, but that's just because it's melting. And when the bars are chilled, the butter will actually help the filling be very firm and sliceable. The next step before I bake the bars is to strain the curd onto the crust. It's kind of an optional step. You could just leave the zest in there, but it's helpful to be able to remove any like little bits of cooked egg if there were any, and just so you have a very, very smooth filling. <laughs> really big lemon bars. <laughs> this is a lot of filling. So see all the solids that I strained out? That just means that I'm not getting them in my filling. Before I put it in the oven, I want to smooth the surface. So the filling is hot, the crust is still pretty hot from having just been in the oven. So that will help to speed up the bake time. I think these will probably take like, it's hard to say because it's quite a thick layer of filling, maybe like 25 to 30 in the oven. But I'm gonna look for some bubbling around the edges and also when I shake the pan, see how it's like pretty wiggly? It's just gonna kind of wobble all as one piece and I should see some puffing. It shouldn't take on much color though, okay? Into the oven. So after 20 minutes, or like 22 minutes, the lemon bars look done, the surface is puffed, it's like beautiful, even color, it's set. When I shake the pan, the whole thing gives like a slight wobble, so I'm gonna pull them out. Look at that beautiful surface. As these cool, the filling will settle, it will all create this like beautiful flat surface. But before we cut it, we wanna chill these. So lemon bars are best served cold. When they're cold, you get the cleanest, best slices. So it's really great if you can let this go overnight and it's getting a little bit late. So we'll come back tomorrow morning and cut them and have lemon bars. And of course, finish them with powdered sugar, which is a must for lemon bars. Here are my lemon bars. These set up in the fridge overnight. So it's the next morning and they look so great. The surface settled nicely. So they have this beautiful sort of flat clean finish. I waited until they were fully cooled and then I covered them and threw them in the fridge. So like when I say fully cooled, you want to make sure that the bottom has no heat on it. If there's even a little bit of warmth in there, what can happen is you'll get some condensation on the surface of the plastic wrap and then that can like drip onto the surface. And then when you put the powdered sugar on, it doesn't look as good. So if you're worried that it's still a little warm, poke some holes in the plastic wrap and that will allow any steam or any like um, moisture that accumulates to escape. But, so this looks good, so I'm gonna uncover. I mean, I guess you could just chill them uncovered too. Not a big deal. All right, they feel nice and firm. I'm going to unmold the whole thing. So I'm just cutting on those sides without that are not lined. Now I'm gonna lift out the whole slab and put it on my cutting board. Are you nervous about this part? Not so much. Because that shortbread base is pretty sturdy, so this should pop out. Well, that worked. Okay. It came out very nicely. I want to slide my spatula under the shortbread just to try to loosen that parchment paper. And then I'll cut them. I thought yesterday that it was like an, a really kind of like crazy amount of filling, but I think that it looks good, the proportions. I'm going to get a wet paper towel because I want to clean off the knife in between cuts so that I get a very defined, sharp edge down the middle. Now I'm going to do the powdered sugar. Keeping that filling really tart, I mean, I took a little bit as I was cutting, I tasted it. It's very, very tart, not like unpleasant, but it's sour enough that having that coating of confectioner sugar on top is gonna be a nice touch and like very welcome. So I have just like a small little sieve. All flowing into the sink. It's like you're powdering it in a storm. <laughs> I blotted the surface because, again, if there's any little beads of moisture on the surface, you won't get full coverage with the powdered sugar. So I'm going over any areas where it's absorbing a little bit, which is very normal. And you basically want to do this right before you serve because the longer this sits, the more the sugar will hydrate and then, you know, and then you're not getting that solid coating. Let's taste. 
I, I like to actually separate them a little bit on the surface. I'm really pleased with this set. It has, like you can tell it's a custard, like there's a little bit of, of a wobble to it, but it's set, it's firm. You get really clean cut sides. And I like the proportion of shortbread to filling. So I'm gonna taste. The shortbread is nice because it like is easy to sort of cut into, but it's still crunchy and, but I can like spoon into it with a fork and it's not really hard. Mm. I feel like it looks like that super simple classic dessert of your childhood, but it also is just actually like, it's kind of just like a super classic lemon tart in bar form and so, so good. Mm. I would consider lemon bars for holiday baking. It's so bright, you can get lemons all year long. Um, but you can do all of your holiday baking in a variety of bakeware by Maiden. It's all porcelain, made in France, thermal shock resistant. You can go from fridge or freezer to oven to table, and it's so beautiful, really high performance. I want to thank Maiden for sponsoring this episode, as always. So go to maidencookware.com, use the code below for 10% off your total order, and happy holiday baking. And thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.